Sir Richard Starkey, known professionally as Ringo Starr, is an English musician, singer, songwriter, and actor who achieved international fame as the drummer for the Beatles. Starr occasionally sang lead vocals with the group, usually for one song on each album, including Yellow Submarine and With a Little Help from My Friends. He also wrote and sang the Beatles' songs Don't Pass Me By and Octopus's Garden, and is credited as a CO writer of four others. Starr was afflicted by life-threatening illnesses during childhood, with periods of prolonged hospitalization. He briefly held a position with British Rail before securing an apprenticeship as a machinist at a Liverpool school equipment manufacturer. Soon afterwards, Starr became interested in the UK skiffle craze and developed a fervent admiration for the genre. In 1957, he CEO founded his first band, the Eddie Clayton Skiffle Group, which earned several prestigious local bookings before the fad succumbed to American rock and roll around early 1958. When the Beatles formed in 1960, Starr was a member of another Liverpool group, Rory Storm and the Hurricanes. After achieving moderate success in the UK and Hamburg, he quit the Hurricanes when he was asked to join the Beatles in August 1962, replacing Pete Best. In addition to the Beatles films, Starr has acted in numerous others. After the band's breakup in 1970, he released several successful singles including the US Top 10 hit It Don't Come Easy, and Number One's Photograph and You're 16. His most successful UK single was Back Off Boogaloo, which peaked at number two. He achieved commercial and critical success with his 1973 album Ringo, which was a top ten release in both the UK and the US. Starr has featured in numerous documentaries, hosted television shows, narrated the first two series of the children's television program Thomas and Friends and portrayed Mr. Conductor during the first season of the PBS children's television series Shining Time Station. Since 1989, he has toured with 13 variations of Ringo Starr and his all-star band. Starr's playing style, which emphasized feel over technical virtuosity, influenced many drummers to reconsider their playing from a compositional perspective. He also influenced various modern drumming techniques, such as the matched grip, tuning the drums lower, and using muffling devices on tonal rings. In his opinion, his finest recorded performance was on the Beatles' reign. In 1999, he was inducted into the Modern Drummer Hall of Fame. In 2011, Rolling Stone readers named him the fifth greatest drummer of all time. He was inducted twice into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, as a Beatle in 1988 and as a solo artist in 2015 and appointed a Knight Bachelor in the 2018 New Year Honors for Services to Music. In 2020, he was cited as the wealthiest drummer in the world, with a net worth of $350 million. Early Life Richard Starkey was born on July 7, 1940 at 9, Madron Street in Dingle, an inner-city area of Liverpool. He is the only child of confectioners Richard Starkey and Elsie Gleave. Elsie enjoyed singing and dancing, a hobby that she shared with her husband, an avid fan of swing. Prior to the birth of their son, whom they called Richie, the couple had spent much of their free time on the local ballroom circuit, but their regular outings ended soon after his birth. Elsie adopted an overprotective approach to raising her son that bordered on fixation. Subsequently, Big Richie, as Starkey's father became known, lost interest in his family, choosing instead to spend long hours drinking and dancing in pubs, sometimes for several consecutive days. In an effort to reduce their housing costs, his family moved in 1944 to another neighborhood in the Dingle, Admiral Grove, soon afterwards his parents separated, and they divorced within the year. Starkey later stated that he has no real memories of his father, who made little effort to bond with him, visiting as few as three times thereafter. Elsie found it difficult to survive on her ex-husband's support payments of 30 shillings a week, 
so she took on several menial jobs cleaning houses before securing a position as a barmaid, an occupation that she held for 12 years. At the age of six, Starkey developed appendicitis. Following a routine appendectomy he contracted peritonitis, causing him to fall into a coma that lasted days. His recovery spanned 12 months, which he spent away from his family at Liverpool's Myrtle Street Children's Hospital. Upon his discharge in May 1948, his mother allowed him to stay at home, causing him to miss school. At age 8, he remained illiterate, with a poor grasp of mathematics. His lack of education contributed to a feeling of alienation at school, which resulted in his regularly playing truant at Sefton Park. After several years of twice-weekly tutoring from his surrogate sister and neighbor, Marie Maguire Crawford, Starkey had nearly caught up to his peers academically, but in 1953, he contracted tuberculosis and was admitted to a sanatorium, where he remained for two years. During his stay the medical staff made an effort to stimulate motor activity and relieve boredom by encouraging their patients to join the hospital band, leading to his first exposure to a percussion instrument, a makeshift mallet made from a cotton bobbin that he used to strike the cabinets next to his bed. Soon afterwards, he grew increasingly interested in drumming receiving a copy of the Alan Ainsworth song Bedtime for Drums as a convalescence gift from Crawford. Starkey commented, I was in the hospital band. That's where I really started playing. I never wanted anything else from there on. My grandparents gave me a mandolin and a banjo, but I didn't want them. My grandfather gave me a harmonica, we had a piano nothing. Only the drums. Starkey attended St. Silas, a Church of England primary school near his house where his classmates nicknamed him Lazarus, and later Dingle Vale Secondary Modern School, where he showed an aptitude for art and drama, as well as practical subjects including mechanics. As a result of the prolonged hospitalizations, he fell behind his peers scholastically and was ineligible for the 11 plus qualifying examination required for attendance at a grammar school. On April 17, 1954, Starkey's mother married Harry Graves at the register office on Mount Pleasant, Liverpool. He was an ex-Londoner who had moved to Liverpool following the failure of his first marriage. Graves, an impassioned fan of big band music and their vocalists, introduced Starkey to recordings by Dinah Shore, Sarah Vaughan and Billy Daniels. Graves stated that he and Ritchie never had an unpleasant exchange between them, Starkey later commented, he was great. I learned gentleness from Harry. After the extended hospital stay following Starkey's recovery from tuberculosis, he did not return to school, preferring instead to stay at home and listen to music while playing along by beating biscuit tins with sticks. Beatles biographer Bob Spitz described Starkey's upbringing as a Dickensian chronicle of misfortune. Houses in the area were poorly ventilated, postage stamp sized, patched together by crumbling plaster walls, with a rear door that opened onto an outhouse. Crawford commented, like all of the families who lived in the Dingle, he was part of an ongoing struggle to survive. The children who lived there spent much of their time at Prince's Park, escaping the soot-filled air of their coal-fueled neighborhood. Adding to their difficult circumstances, violent crime was an almost constant concern for people living in one of the oldest and poorest inner-city districts in Liverpool. Starkey later commented, You kept your head down, your eyes open, and you didn't get in anybody's way. After his return home from the sanatorium in late 1955, Starkey entered the workforce but was lacking in motivation and discipline, his initial attempts at gainful employment proved unsuccessful. In an effort to secure himself some warm clothes, he briefly held a railway worker's job with British Rail, which came with an employer-issued suit. He was supplied with a hat but no uniform and, unable to pass the physical examination, he was laid off and granted unemployment benefits. 
He then found work as a waiter serving drinks on a day boat that travelled from Liverpool to North Wales, but his fear of conscription into military service led him to quit the job, not wanting to give the Royal Navy the impression that he was suitable for seafaring work. In mid-1956, Graves secured Starkey a position as an apprentice machinist at Henry Hunt & Son, a Liverpool school equipment manufacturer. While working at the facility Starkey befriended Roy Trafford, and the two bonded over their shared interest in music. Trafford introduced Starkey to Skiffle, and he quickly became a fervent admirer. First Bands, 1957-1961 Soon after Trafford piqued Starkey's interest in Skiffle, the two began rehearsing songs in the manufacturing plant's cellar during their lunch breaks. Trafford recalled, I played a guitar, and just made a noise on a box. Sometimes, he just slapped a biscuit tin with some keys, or banged on the backs of chairs. The pair were joined by Starkey's neighbor and co-worker, the guitarist Eddie Miles, forming the Eddie Miles Band, later renamed Eddie Clayton and the Clayton Squares after a Liverpool landmark. The band performed popular skiffle songs such as Rock Island Line and Walking Cane, with Starkey raking a thimble across a washboard, creating primitive, driving rhythms. Starkey enjoyed dancing as his parents had years earlier, and he and Trafford briefly took dance lessons at two schools. Though the lessons were short-lived, they provided Starkey and Trafford with an introduction that allowed them to dance competently while enjoying nights out on the town. On Christmas Day 1957, Graves gave Starkey a second-hand drum kit consisting of a snare drum, bass drum and a makeshift cymbal fashioned from a rubbish bin lid. Although basic and crude, the kit facilitated his progression as a musician while increasing the commercial potential of the Eddie Clayton band who went on to book prestigious local gigs before the skiffle craze faded in early 1958 as American rock and roll became popular in the UK. In November 1959, Starkey joined Al Caldwell's Texans, a skiffle group who were looking for someone with a proper drum kit so that the group could transition from one of Liverpool's best-known skiffle acts to a full-fledged rock and roll band. They had begun playing local clubs as the Raging Texans, then Jet Storm and the Raging Texans before settling on Rory Storm and the Hurricanes shortly before recruiting Starkey. About this time he adopted the stage name Ringo Starr, derived from the rings he wore and also because it implied a country and western influence. His drum solos were billed as Star Time. By early 1960, the Hurricanes had become one of Liverpool's leading bands. In May, they were offered a three-month residency at a Butlins holiday camp in Wales. Although initially reluctant to accept the residency and end his five-year machinist apprenticeship that he had begun four years earlier, Starr eventually agreed to the arrangement. The Butlins gig led to other opportunities for the band, including an unpleasant tour of U.S. Air Force bases in France about which Starr commented, The French don't like the British, at least I didn't like them. The Hurricanes became so successful that when initially offered a highly coveted residency in Hamburg, they turned it down because of their prior commitment with Butlins. They eventually accepted, joining the Beatles at Bruno Koschmitter's Kaiserkala on October 1, 1960, where Starr first met the band. Storm's Hurricanes were given top billing over the Beatles, who also received less pay. Starr performed with the Beatles during a few stand-in engagements while in Hamburg. On October 15, 1960, he drummed with John Lennon, Paul McCartney and George Harrison, recording with them for the first time while backing Hurricane singer L.U. Walters on the George Gershwin slash Dubose Hayward aria Summertime. During Starr's first stay in Hamburg he also met Tony Sheridan, who valued his drumming abilities to the point of asking Starr to leave the Hurricanes and join his band. The Beatles, 1962-1970 Replacing Best Starr quit Rory Storm and the Hurricanes in January 1962 and briefly joined Sheridan in Hamburg before returning to the Hurricanes for a third season at Butlins. On August 14, 
Starr accepted Lennon's invitation to join the Beatles. On August 16, Beatles manager Brian Epstein fired their drummer, Pete Best, who recalled, he said I've got some bad news for you. The boys want you out and Ringo in. He said George Martin wasn't too pleased with my playing the boys thought I didn't fit in. Starr first performed as a member of the Beatles on August 18, 1962, at a horticultural society dance at Port Sunlight. After his appearance at the Cavern Club the following day, Best fans, upset by his firing, held vigils outside his house and at the club shouting Pete forever. Ringo never. Harrison received a black eye from one upset fan, and Epstein, whose car tires they had flattened in anger, temporarily hired a bodyguard. Star's first recording session as a member of the Beatles took place on September 4, 1962. He stated that Martin had thought that he was crazy and couldn't play, because I was trying to play the percussion and the drums at the same time, we were just a four piece band. For their second recording session with Starr, on September 11, 1962, Martin replaced him with session drummer Andy White while recording takes for what would be the two sides of the Beatles' first single, Love Me Do, backed with P.S. I Love You. Starr played tambourine on Love Me Do and Maracas on P.S. I Love You. Concerned about his status in the Beatles, he thought, that's the end, they're doing a Pete Best on me. Martin later clarified, I simply didn't know what Ringo was like and I wasn't prepared to take any risks. By November 1962, Starr had been accepted by Beatles fans, who were now calling for him to sing. He began receiving an amount of fan mail equal to that of the others, which helped to secure his position within the band. Starr considered himself fortunate to be on the same wavelength as the other Beatles, I had to be, or I wouldn't have lasted. I had to join them as people as well as a drummer. He was given a small percentage of Lennon and McCartney's publishing company, Northern Songs, but derived his primary income during this period from a one-quarter share of Beatles Ltd., a corporation financed by the band's net concert earnings. He commented on the nature of his lifestyle after having achieved success with the Beatles, I lived in nightclubs for three years. It used to be a non-stop party. Like his father, Starr became well known for his late-night dancing and he received praise for his skills. Worldwide Success During 1963, the Beatles enjoyed increasing popularity in Britain. In January, their second single, Please Please Me, followed Love Me Do into the UK charts and a successful television appearance on Thank Your Lucky Stars earned favorable reviews, leading to a boost in sales and radio play. By the end of the year, the phenomenon known as Beatlemania had spread throughout the country, and by February 1964 the Beatles had become an international success when they performed in New York City on The Ed Sullivan Show to a record 73 million viewers. Starr commented, In the States I know I went over well. It knocked me out to see and hear the kids waving for me. I'd made it as a personality. Our appeal, is that we're ordinary lads. He was a source of inspiration for several songs written at the time, including Penny Valentine's I Want to Kiss Ringo Goodbye and Rolf Harris's Ringo for President. Cher released her first single, Ringo, I Love You in 1964 under the pseudonym Bonnie Jo Mason. In 1964, I Love Ringo lapel pins were the best-selling Beatles merchandise. The prominent placing of the Ludwig logo on the bass drum of his American import drum kit gave the company such a burst of publicity that it became the dominant drum manufacturer in North America for the next 20 years. During live performances, the Beatles continued the star time routine that had been popular among his fans. Lennon would place a microphone in front of Starr's kit in preparation for his spotlight moment and audiences would erupt in screams. When the Beatles made their film debut in A Hard Day's Night, Starr garnered praise from critics, 
who considered his delivery of deadpan one-liners and his non-speaking scenes highlights. The extended non-speaking sequences had to be arranged by director Richard Lester because of Star's lack of sleep the previous night, Star commented, because I'd been drinking all night I was incapable of saying a line. Epstein attributed Star's acclaim to the little man's quaintness. After the release of the Beatles' second feature film, Help, Star won a Melody Maker poll against his fellow Beatles for his performance as the central character in the film. During an interview with Playboy in 1964, Lennon explained that Star had filled in with the Beatles when Best was ill, Star replied, took little pills to make him ill. Soon after, Best filed a libel suit against him that lasted four years before the court reached an undisclosed settlement in Best's favor. In June, the Beatles were scheduled to tour Denmark, the Netherlands, Asia, Australia, and New Zealand. Before the start of the tour, Starr was stricken with a high-grade fever, pharyngitis, and tonsillitis, and briefly stayed in a local hospital, followed by several days of recuperation at home. He was temporarily replaced for five concerts by 24-year-old session drummer Jimmy Nicol. Starr was discharged from the hospital and rejoined the band in Melbourne on June 15. He later said that he feared he would be permanently replaced during his illness. In August, the Beatles were introduced to American songwriter Bob Dylan, who offered the group cannabis cigarettes. Starr was the first to try one but the others were hesitant. On February 11, 1965, Starr married Maureen Cox, whom he had met in 1962. By this time the stress and pressure of Beatlemania had reached a peak for him. He received a telephone death threat before a show in Montreal, and resorted to positioning his symbols vertically in an attempt to defend against would-be assassins. The constant pressure affected the Beatles' performances, Starr commented, We were turning into such bad musicians, there was no groove to it. He was also feeling increasingly isolated from the musical activities of his bandmates, who were moving past the traditional boundaries of rock music into territory that often did not require his accompaniment. During recording sessions he spent hours playing cards with their road manager Neil Aspinall and Rhodey Mal Evans while the other Beatles perfected tracks without him. In a letter published in Melody Maker, a fan asked the Beatles to let Starr sing more, he replied, quite happy with my one little track on each album. Studio Years In August 1966, the Beatles released Revolver, their seventh UK LP. It included the song Yellow Submarine, their only British number one single with Starr as the lead singer. Later that month, owing to the increasing pressures of touring, the Beatles gave their final concert, a 30-minute performance at San Francisco's Candlestick Park star commented, We gave up touring at the right time. Four years of Beatlemania were enough for anyone. By December he had moved to a larger estate called Sunny Heights, three acres in size, at St. George's Hill in Weybridge, Surrey, near to Lennon. Although he had equipped the house with many luxury items, including numerous televisions, light machines, film projectors, stereo equipment, a billiard table, go-kart track, and a bar named The Flying Cow, he did not include a drum kit, he explained, when we don't record, I don't play. For the Beatles' seminal 1967 album, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, Starr sang lead vocals on the Lennon-McCartney composition with a little help from my friends. Although the Beatles had enjoyed widespread commercial and critical success with Sgt. Pepper, the long hours they spent recording the LP contributed to Starr's increased feeling of alienation within the band, he commented, wasn't our best album. That was the peak for everyone else, but for me it was a bit like being a session musician. They more or less direct me in the style I can play. His inability to compose new material led to his input being minimized during recording sessions, he often found himself relegated to adding minor percussion effects to songs by McCartney, Lennon, and Harrison. During his downtime, Starr worked on his guitar playing 
and said, I jump into chords that no one seems to get into. Most of the stuff I write is 12 bar. Epstein's death in August 1967 left the Beatles without management, Starr remarked, a strange time for us, when it's someone who we've relied on in the business, where we never got involved. Soon afterwards, the band began an ill-fated film project, Magical Mystery Tour. Starr's growing interest in photography led to his billing as the movie's director of photography, and his participation in the film's editing was matched only by that of McCartney. In February 1968, Starr became the first Beatle to sing on another artist's show without the others. He sang the Buck Owens hit Act Naturally, and performed a duet with Scylla Black, Do You Like Me Just a Little Bit, on her BBC One television program, Scylla. In November 1968, Apple Records released The Beatles, commonly known as The White Album. The album was partly inspired by the band's recent interactions with the Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. While attending the Maharishi's intermediate course at his ashram in Rishikesh, India, they enjoyed one of their most prolific writing periods, composing most of the album there. Starr left after ten days, but completed his first recorded Beatles song, Don't Pass Me By. During the recording of the White Album, relations within the Beatles deteriorated, at times only one or two members were involved in the recording for a track. Starr had grown weary of McCartney's increasingly overbearing approach and Lennon's passive-aggressive behavior, exacerbated by Starr's resentment of the near-constant presence of Lennon's wife, Yoko Ono. After one particularly difficult session during which McCartney harshly criticized his drumming, Starr quit the Beatles for two weeks, holidaying with his family in Sardinia on a boat loaned by actor Peter Sellers. During a lunch break the chef served octopus, which Starr refused to eat, a conversation with the ship's captain about the animal inspired Starr's Abbey Road composition Octopus's Garden, which Starr wrote on guitar during the trip. He returned to the studio two weeks later to find that Harrison had covered his drum kit in flowers as a welcome back gesture. Despite a temporary return to congeniality during the completion of the White Album, production of the Beatles' fourth feature film, Let It Be, and its accompanying LP, further strained band relationships. On August 20, 1969, the Beatles gathered for the final time at Abbey Road Studios for a mixing session for I Want You. At a business meeting on September 20, Lennon told the others that he had quit the Beatles, although the band's breakup would not become public knowledge until McCartney's announcement on April 10, 1970 that he was also leaving. Solo Career 1970s Shortly before McCartney announced his exit from the Beatles in April 1970, he and Starr had a falling out due to McCartney's refusal to cede the release date of his eponymous solo album to allow for Starr's debut, Sentimental Journey, and the Beatles' Let It Be. Starr's album composed of renditions of pre-rock standards that included musical arrangements by Quincy Jones, Maurice Gibb, George Martin, and McCartney peaked at number 7 in the UK and number 22 in the US. Starr followed Sentimental Journey with the country-inspired Bocuse of Blues, engineered by Scotty Moore and featuring renowned Nashville session musician Pete Drake. Despite favorable reviews, the album was a commercial failure. Starr subsequently combined his musical activities with developing a career as a film actor. Starr played drums on Lennon's John Lennon slash Plastic Ono Band, Ono's Yoko Ono slash Plastic Ono Band, and on Harrison's albums All Things Must Pass, Living in the Material World and Dark Horse. In 1971, Starr participated in the concert for Bangladesh, organized by Harrison and with him Sio wrote the hit single It Don't Come Easy, which reached number four in both the US and the UK. The following year he released his most successful UK hit, Back Off Boogaloo, which peaked at number two. Having become friends with the English singer Mark Bolan, Starr made his directorial debut with the 1972 T-Rex documentary Born to Boogie. In 1973 and 1974, 
Star had two number one hits in the US, Photograph, a UK number eight hit CEO written with Harrison, and Your 16, written by the Sherman Brothers. Star's third million selling single in the US, Your 16 was released in the UK in February 1974 where it peaked at number four. Both tracks appeared on Star's debut rock album, Ringo, produced by Richard Perry and featuring further contributions from Harrison as well as a song each from Lennon and McCartney. A commercial and critical success, the LP also included Oh My My, a US number 5. The album reached number 7 in the UK and number 2 in the US. Author Peter Doggett describes Ringo as a template for Star's solo career, saying that, as a musician first rather than a songwriter, he would rely on his friends and his charm, and if both were on tap, then the results were usually appealing. Good Night Vienna followed in 1974 and was also successful, reaching number 8 in the US and number 30 in the UK. Featuring contributions from Lennon, Elton John, and Harry Nilsson, the album included a cover of The Platter's Only You, which peaked at number 6 in the US and number 28 in the UK and Hoyt Axton's No No Song, which was a U.S. number 3 and Star's seventh consecutive top 10 hit. The Elton John-written Snoo Crew failed to chart in the U.K., however. During this period Star became romantically involved with Lindsay DePaul. He played tambourine on a song she wrote and produced for Vera Lynn, Don't You Remember When, and he inspired another DePaul song, If I Don't Get You The Next One Will which she described as being about revenge after he missed a dinner appointment with her because he was asleep in his office. Star founded the record label Ring O Records in 1975. The company signed 11 artists and released 15 singles and 5 albums between 1975 and 1978, including works by David Henschel, Graham Bonnet, and Rab Noakes. The commercial impact of Star's own career diminished over the same period, However, although he continued to record and remained a familiar celebrity presence. Speaking in 2001, he attributed this downward turn to his taking enough interest in music, saying of himself and friends such as Nilsson and Keith Moon, we weren't musicians dabbling in drugs and alcohol, now we were junkies dabbling in music. Star, Nilsson, and Moon were members of a drinking club. The Hollywood Vampires. From the late 1960s until the mid 1980s, Star and the designer Robin Cruikshank ran a furniture and interior design company, Roar. Roar's designs were placed on sale in the department stores of Harvey Nichols and Liberty of London. The company designed the interiors of palaces in Abu Dhabi and Oman, and the apartments of Paul Raymond and Star's friend Nilsson. In November 1976, Star appeared as a guest at the band's farewell concert, featured in the 1978 Martin Scorsese documentary The Last Waltz. Also in 1976, Star issued Ringo's Rotogravure, the first release under his new contract with Atlantic Records for the North American market and Polydor for all other territories. The album was produced by Arif Martin and featured compositions by Lennon, McCartney, and Harrison. Star promoted the release heavily, yet Rotogravure and its accompanying singles failed to chart in the UK. In America, the LP produced two minor hits, A Dose of Rock and Roll and a cover of Hey Baby, and achieved moderate sales, reaching a chart position of 28. Its disappointing performance inspired Atlantic to revamp Star's formula, the result was a blend of disco and 1970s pop. Ringo the Fourth. The album failed to chart in the UK and peaked at number 162 in the US. In 1978, Star released Bad Boy, which reached number 129 in the US and again failed to place on the UK albums chart. In April 1979, Star became seriously ill with intestinal problems relating to his childhood bout of peritonitis and was taken to the Princess Grace Hospital in Monte Carlo. He almost died and during an operation on April 28, several feet of intestine had to be removed. 
Three weeks later he played with McCartney and Harrison at Eric Clapton's wedding. On November 28, a fire destroyed his Hollywood home and much of his Beatles memorabilia. 1980s On May 19, 1980, Starr and Barbara Bach survived a car crash in Surrey, England. Following Lennon's murder in December 1980, Harrison modified the lyrics of a song he had originally written for Starr, all those years ago, as a tribute to their former bandmate. Released as a Harrison single in 1981, the track, which included Starr's drum part and overdubbed backing vocals by McCartney, peaked at number 2 in the US charts and number 13 in the UK. Later that year, Starr released Stop and Smell the Roses, featuring songs produced by Nilsson, McCartney, Harrison, Ronnie Wood, and Stephen Stills. The album's lead single, The Harrison composed Rack My Brain, reached number 38 in the US charts, but failed to chart in the UK. Lennon had offered a pair of songs for inclusion on the album Nobody Told Me and Life Begins at 40 but following his death, Starr did not feel comfortable recording them. Soon after the murder, Starr and his girlfriend Barbara Bach flew to New York City to be with Lennon's widow Yoko Ono. Following Stop and Smell the Roses, Starr's recording projects were beset with problems. After completing Old Wave in 1982 with producer Joe Walsh, he was unable to find a record company willing to release the album in the UK or the US. In 1987, he abandoned sessions in Memphis for a planned country album, produced by Chips Moman, after which Moman was blocked by a court injunction from issuing the recordings. Starr narrated the 1984-86 series of the children's series Thomas and Friends, a Brit Allcroft production based on the books by the Reverend W. Audrey. For a single season in 1989, Starr also portrayed the character Mr. Conductor in the American Thomas and Friends spin-off, Shining Time Station. In 1985, Starr performed with his son Zach as part of Artists United Against Apartheid on the recording Sun City, and, with Harrison and Eric Clapton, was among the special guests on Carl Perkins' TV special Blue Suede Shoes, a rockabilly session. In 1987, he played drums on Harrison's Beatles pastiche When We Was Fab and also appeared in Godly and Cream's innovative video clip for the song. The same year, Starr joined Harrison, Clapton, Jeff Lynne and Elton John in a performance at London's Wembley Arena for the Prince's Trust charity. In January 1988, he attended the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame ceremony in New York with Harrison and Ono to accept the Beatles' induction into the Hall of Fame. During October and November 1988, Starr and Bach attended a detox clinic in Tucson, Arizona, each received a six-week treatment for alcoholism. He later commented on his long-standing addiction, Years I've lost, absolute years. I've no idea what happened. I lived in a blackout. Having embraced sobriety, Starr focused on re-establishing his career by making a return to touring. On July 23, 1989, Ringo Starr and his all-star band gave their first performance to an audience of 10,000 in Dallas, Texas. Setting a pattern that would continue over the following decades, the band consisted of Starr and an assortment of musicians who had been successful in their own right at different times. The concerts interchanged Starr's singing including selections of his Beatles and solo songs, with performances of each of the other artists' well-known material, the latter incorporating either Starr or another musician as drummer. 1990s The first All-Star excursion led to the release of Ringo Starr and his All-Star Band, a compilation of live performances from the 1989 tour. Also in 1990, Starr recorded a version of the song I Call Your Name for a television special marking the 10th anniversary of John Lennon's death and the 50th anniversary of Lennon's birth. The track, produced by Lynn, features a supergroup composed of Lynn, Tom Petty, Joe Walsh and Jim Keltner. The following year, 
Star made a cameo appearance on The Simpsons episode Brush with Greatness and contributed an original song, You Never Know, to the soundtrack of the John Hughes film Curly Sue. In 1992, he released his first studio album in nine years, Time Takes Time, which was produced by Phil Ramone, Don Was, Lynn and Peter Asher and featured guest appearances by various stars including Brian Wilson and Harry Nilsson. The album failed to achieve commercial success, although the single Weight of the World peaked at number 74 in the UK, marking his first appearance on the singles chart there since Only You in 1974. In 1994, he began a collaboration with the surviving former Beatles for the Beatles Anthology Project. They recorded two new Beatles songs built around solo vocal and piano tapes recorded by Lennon and gave lengthy interviews about the Beatles' career. Released in December 1995, Free as a Bird was the first new Beatles single since 1970. In March 1996, they released a second single, Real Love. The temporary reunion ended when Harrison refused to participate in the completion of a third song. Starr then played drums on McCartney's 1997 album Flaming Pie. Among the tracks to which he contributed, Little Willow was a song McCartney wrote about Starr's ex-wife Maureen, who died in 1994, while Really Love You was the first official release ever credited to McCartney Starkey. In 1998, he released two albums on the Mercury label. The studio album Vertical Man marked the beginning of a nine-year partnership with Mark Hudson, who produced the album and, with his band The Roundheads, formed the core of the backing group on the recordings. In addition, many famous guests joined on various tracks, including Martin, Petty, McCartney and, in his final appearance on a Star album, Harrison. Most of the songs were written by Star and the band. Joe Walsh and the Roundheads joined Star for his appearance on VH1 Storytellers, which was released as an album under the same name. During the show, he performed greatest hits and new songs and told anecdotes relating to them. Star's final release for Mercury was the 1999 Christmas-themed I Wanna Be Santa Claus. The album was a commercial failure, although the record company chose not to issue it in Britain. 2000s. Star was inducted into the Percussive Arts Society Hall of Fame in 2002, joining an elite group of drummers and percussionists that include Buddy Rich, William F. Ludwig Sr. and William F. Ludwig Jr. On November 29, 2002, he performed Photograph and a cover of Carl Perkins' Honey Don't at the concert for George held in the Royal Albert Hall, London. Early the following year, he released the album Ringo Rama, which contained a song he co wrote as a tribute to Harrison, Never Without You. Also in 2003, he formed Pumpkinhead Records with all star band member Mark Hudson. The label was not prolific, but their first signing was Liam Lynch, who produced a 2003 LP entitled Fake Songs. Star served as an honorary Santa tracker and voiceover personality in 2003 and 2004 during the London stop in Father Christmas's annual Christmas Eve journey, as depicted in the annual NORAD Tracks Santa program. According to NORAD officials, he was a star in the East who helped guide North American Aerospace Defense Command's Santa tracking tradition. His 2005 release Choose Love eschewed the star guest's approach of his last two studio albums but failed to chart in the UK or the US. That same year, Liverpool City Council announced plans to demolish Star's birthplace, 9, Madron Street stating that it had no historical significance. The LCC later announced that the building would be taken apart brick by brick and preserved. Star released the album Liverpool 8 in January 2008, coinciding with the start of Liverpool's year as the European capital of culture. Hudson was the initial producer of the recordings, but after a falling out with Star, he was replaced by David A. Stewart. Star performed the title track at the opening ceremony for Liverpool's appointment 
but thereafter attracted controversy over his seemingly unflattering comments about his city of birth. Later that year, he was the object of further criticism in the press for posting a video on his website in which he harangued fans and autograph hunters for sending him items to sign. In April 2009, he reunited with McCartney at the David Lynch Foundation's Change Begins Within Benefit concert, held at New York's Radio City Music Hall. Having played his own set beforehand, Starr joined McCartney for the finale and performed with a little help from My Friends, among other songs. Starr also appeared on stage during Microsoft's June 2009 E3 press conference with Yoko Ono, McCartney, and Olivia Harrison to promote the Beatles rock band video game. 2010s In 2010, Starr self-produced and released his 15th studio album, Why Not, which included the track Walk With You and featured a vocal contribution from McCartney. Later that year, he appeared during Hope for Haiti Now, a global benefit for earthquake relief as a celebrity phone operator. On July 7, 2010, he celebrated his 70th birthday at Radio City Music Hall with another all-star band concert, topped with friends and family joining him on stage including Ono, his son Zach, and McCartney. Star recorded a cover of Buddy Holly's Think It Over for the 2011 tribute album Listen To Me, Buddy Holly. In January 2012, he released the album Ringo 2012. Later that year, he announced that his all-star band would tour the Pacific Rim during 2013 with select dates in New Zealand, Australia, and Japan, it was his first performance in Japan since 1996, and his debut in both New Zealand and Australia. In January 2014, Starr joined McCartney for a special performance at the 56th Annual Grammy Awards in Los Angeles, where they performed the song Queenie I. That summer he toured Canada and the U.S. with an updated version of the 12th All-Star Band, featuring multi-instrumentalist Warren Hamm instead of saxophonist Mark Rivera. In July, Starr became involved in Number Peace Rocks, an anti-violence campaign started by fashion designer John Varvatos, in conjunction with the David Lynch Foundation. In September 2014, he won at the GQ Men of the Year Awards for his humanitarian work with the David Lynch Foundation. In January 2015, Starr tweeted the title of his new studio album Postcards from Paradise. The album came a few weeks in advance of Starr's induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and was released on March 31, 2015, to mixed to positive reviews. Later that month, Starr and his band announced a forthcoming summer 2016 tour of the U.S. Full production began in June 2016 in Syracuse. On July 7, 2017, Starr released Give More Love as a single, which was followed two months later by his 19th studio album, also titled Give More Love and issued by UME. The album includes appearances by McCartney as well as frequent collaborators such as Joe Walsh, David A. Stewart, Gary Nicholson, and members of the All-Star Band. On September 13, 2019, Starr announced the upcoming release of his 20th album, What's My Name, to be released by UME on October 25, 2019. He recorded the album in his home studio, Rockabella West in Los Angeles. 2020s. In celebration of his 80th birthday in July 2020, Starr organized a live-streamed concert featuring appearances by many of his friends and collaborators including McCartney, Walsh, Ben Harper, Dave Grawl, Sheryl Crow, Sheila E., and Willie Nelson. The show replaced his annual public birthday celebration at the Capitol Records building, which was cancelled due to the COVID-19 pandemic. On December 16, 2020, Star released the song Here's to the Nights. An accompanying video was released on December 18. The song of peace, love, and friendship was written by Diane Warren and features a group of his friends, including McCartney, Joe Walsh, 
Corinne Bailey Ray, Eric Burden, Cheryl Crow, Phineas, Dave Grawl, Ben Harper, Lenny Kravitz, Jenny Lewis, Steve Lukather, Chris Stapleton, and Yola. The song was the lead single from his EP Zoom In, which was released on March 19, 2021 via UME. On March 16, 2021, Starr stated in an interview with Esquire that it was unlikely that he would record another full length album preferring to release EPS instead. On September 24 that year, he released the EP Change the World, a sequel to the previous EP Zoom In on February 7, 2022, Starr announced his intention to return to touring with his band for the first time since 2019. The tour was announced to run from May 27 to June 26 but several concerts held in June would end up being postponed till October due to two members of the band catching COVID-19. These postponed events were added to the band's previously announced fall tour to be held in September and October. On October 1, he cancelled a concert at the Four Wines New Buffalo Casino due to an unspecified illness affecting his voice. Another concert to be held at Mystic Lake Casino Hotel the following day was also postponed. On October 3, it was confirmed that Starr had tested positive for COVID-19, after which several shows in Canada were cancelled. Musicianship Influences During his youth, Starr had been a devoted fan of skiffle and blues music, but by the time he joined the Texans in 1958, he had developed a preference for rock and roll. He was also influenced by country artists, including Hank Williams, Buck Owens, and Hank Snow, and jazz artists such as Chico Hamilton and Youssef Latif, whose compositional style inspired Starr's fluid and energetic drum fills and grooves. While reflecting on Buddy Rich, Starr commented, He does things with one hand that I can't do with nine, but that's technique. Everyone I talk to says what about Buddy Rich? Well, what about him? Because he doesn't turn me on. He stated that he was never really into drummers, but identified Cozy Cole's 1958 cover of Benny Goodman's Topsy Part 2 as the one drum record he bought. Star's first musical hero was Gene Autry, about whom he commented, I remember getting shivers up my back when he sang, South of the Border. By the early 1960s he had become an ardent fan of Lee Dorsey. In November 1964, Starr told Melody Maker, Our music is second-hand versions of Negro music. 90% of the music I like is colored. Drums Starr said of his drumming, I'm no good on the technical things. I'm your basic offbeat drummer with funny fills because I'm really left-handed playing a right-handed kit. I can't roll around the drums because of that. Beatles producer George Martin said, Ringo hit good and hard and used the tom-tom well, even though he couldn't do a roll to save his life, but later said, he's got tremendous feel. He always helped us to hit the right tempo for a song, and gave it that support that rock-solid backbeat that made the recording of all the Beatles songs that much easier. Starr said he did not believe the drummer's role was to interpret the song. Instead, comparing his drumming to painting, he said, I am the foundation, and then I put a bit of glow here and there. If there's a gap, I want to be good enough to fill it. In 2011, Rolling Stone readers voted Starr the fifth greatest drummer of all time. Journalist Robin Flans wrote for the Percussive Arts Society, I cannot count the number of drummers who have told me that Ringo inspired their passion for drums. Drummer Steve Smith said. Before Ringo, drum stars were measured by their soloing ability and virtuosity. Ringo's popularity brought forth a new paradigm in how the public saw drummers. We started to see the drummer as an equal participant in the compositional aspect. One of Ringo's great qualities was that he composed unique, stylistic drum parts for the Beatles' songs. His parts are so signature to the songs that you can listen to a Ringo drum part without the rest of the music and still identify the song. 
Starr said his favourite drummer is Jim Keltner, with whom he first played at the concert for Bangladesh in August 1971. The pair subsequently played drums together on some of Harrison's recordings during the 1970s, on Ringo and other albums by Starr, and on the early All-Star Band tours. For Ringo's rotogravure in 1976, Starr credited himself as Thunder and Keltner as Lightning. Starr influenced Genesis drummer Phil Collins, who said, I think he's vastly underrated, Ringo. The drum fills on a day in the life are very, very complex things. You could take a great drummer from today and say, I want it like that, and they really wouldn't know what to do. Collins said his drumming on the 1983 Genesis song That's All was an affectionate attempt at a Ringo Starr drum part. In an often repeated but apocryphal story, when asked if Starr was the best drummer in the world, Lennon quipped that he wasn't even the best drummer in the Beatles. The line actually comes from a 1981 episode of the BBC radio comedy series Radio Active although it gained more prominence when used by the television comedian Jasper Carrot in 1983, three years after Lennon's death. In September 1980, Lennon told Rolling Stone that Starr was a damn good drummer whose talent would have surfaced even without the Beatles. T. Jinder Singh of the indie rock band Corner Shop highlighted Starr as a pioneering drummer, saying, there was a time when the common consensus was that Ringo couldn't play. What's that all about? He's totally unique, a one-off, and hip-hop has a lot to thank him for. In his book The Complete Beatles Recording Sessions, Mark Luizon says there were fewer than a dozen occasions in the Beatles' eight-year recording career where session breakdowns were caused by Starr making a mistake, while the vast majority of takes were stopped due to mistakes by the other Beatles. Starr influenced various modern drumming techniques such as the matched grip, tuning the drums lower, and using muffling devices on tonal rings. According to Ken McAuliffe and Donnie Marshall, co-authors of classic rock drummers, Ringo's fat tom sounds and delicate cymbal work were imitated by thousands of drummers. In 2021, Starr announced a 10-part master class course called Drumming and Creative Collaboration. Vocals Starr sang lead vocals for a song on most of the Beatles' studio albums as part of an attempt to establish a vocal personality for each band member. In many cases, Lennon or McCartney wrote the lyrics and melody especially for him, as they did for Yellow Submarine from Revolver and with a little help from my friends on Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. These melodies were tailored to Starr's limited baritone vocal range. Because of his distinctive voice, Starr rarely performed backing vocals during his time with the Beatles, but they can be heard on songs such as Maxwell's Silver Hammer and Carry That Weight. He is also the lead vocalist on his compositions Don't Pass Me By and Octopus's Garden. In addition, he sang lead on I Wanna Be Your Man, Boys, Matchbox, Honey Don't, Act Naturally, Good Night and What Goes On. Songwriter Starr's idiosyncratic turns of phrase or Ringoisms, such as A Hard Day's Night and Tomorrow Never Knows, were used as song titles by the Beatles, particularly by Lennon. McCartney commented, Ringo would do these little malapropisms, he would say things slightly wrong, like people do, but his were always wonderful, very lyrical, they were sort of magic. Starr also occasionally contributed lyrics to unfinished Lennon-McCartney songs, such as the line darning his socks in the night when there's nobody there in Eleanor Rigby. Starr is credited as the sole composer of two Beatles songs, Don't Pass Me By and Octopus's Garden, the latter written with assistance from Harrison. While promoting the Abbey Road album in 1969, Harrison recognized Starr's lyrics to Octopus's Garden as an unwittingly profound message about finding inner peace, and therefore an example of how Ringo writes his cosmic songs without knowing it. Starr is also credited as a CO writer of What Goes On, Flying and Dig It. On material issued after the band's breakup, 
he received a writing credit for taking a trip to Carolina and joint songwriter credits with the other Beatles for 12 bar original, Los Paranoias, Christmas Time, Susie Parker and Jesse's Dream. In a 2003 interview, Starr discussed Harrison's input in his songwriter and said, I was great at writing two verses and a chorus, I'm still pretty good at that. Finishing songs is not my forte. Harrison helped Starr complete two of his biggest hit songs, It Don't Come Easy and Back Off Boogaloo, although he only accepted a credit for Photograph, which they wrote together in France. Starting with the Ringo album in 1973, Starr shared a songwriter partnership with Vini Pancha. One of the pair's first collaborations was Oh My My. Over half of the songs on Ringo the Fourth were Starkey Pancha compositions, but the partnership produced just two more songs, released on Bad Boy in 1978. Personal Life Starr met hairdresser Maureen Cox in 1962, the same week that he joined the Beatles. They married in February 1965. Beatles manager Brian Epstein was best man and Starr's stepfather Harry Graves and fellow Beatle George Harrison were witnesses. Their marriage became the subject of the novelty song Treat Him Tender, Maureen by the Chic Clats. The couple had three children, Zach, Jason, and Lee. In 1971, Starr purchased Lennon's home Tittenhurst Park at Sunning Hill in Berkshire and moved his family there. The couple divorced in 1975 following Starr's repeated infidelities. Maureen died from leukemia at age 48 in 1994. Starr met actress Barbara Bach in 1980 on the set of the film Caveman, and they were married at Marylebone Town Hall on April 27, 1981. In 1985, he was the first of the Beatles to become a grandfather upon the birth of Zach's daughter Tadia Jane Starkey. Zach is also a drummer, and he spent time with the Who's Keith Moon during his father's regular absences, he has performed with his father during some all-star band tours. Starr has eight grandchildren, two from Zach, three from Jason, and three from Lee. In 2016, he was the first Beatle to become a great grandfather. Star and Bach split their time between homes in Cranley, Los Angeles, and Monte Carlo. He was listed at number 56 in the Sunday Times Rich List 2011 with an estimated personal wealth of £150 million. In 2012, he was estimated to be the wealthiest drummer in the world. In 2014, Starr announced that his 200-acre Surrey estate at Ridinghurst was for sale, with its Grade II listed Jacobean house. However, he retains a property in the London district of Chelsea off Kings Road, and he and Bach continue to divide their time between London and Los Angeles. In December 2015, Starr and Bach auctioned some of their personal and professional items via Julian's Auctions in Los Angeles. The collection included Starr's first Ludwig Black Oyster Pearl drum kit, instruments given to him by Harrison, Lennon, and Mark Bolan, and a first pressing copy of the Beatles' White Album numbered 0000001. The auction raised over $9 million, a portion of which was set aside for the Lotus Foundation, a charity founded by Starr and Bach. In 2016, Starr expressed his support for the United Kingdom's withdrawal from the European Union. I thought the European Union was a great idea, he said, but I didn't see it going anywhere lately. In 2017, he described his impatience for Britain to get on with Brexit, declaring that to be in control of your country is a good move. In October 2021, Starr was named in the Pandora Papers which allege a secret financial deal of politicians and celebrities using tax havens in an effort to avoid the payment of owed taxes. Starr is a vegetarian and meditates daily. His catchphrase and motto for life is peace and love. Awards and Honors Starr and the other members of the Beatles were appointed members of the Order of the British Empire in the 1965 Birthday Honors 
they received their insignia from Queen Elizabeth II at an investiture at Buckingham Palace on October 26. He and the other Beatles were collectively nominated for a BAFTA Award for Best Newcomer for their performances in the 1964 film A Hard Day's Night. In 1971, the Beatles received an Academy Award for Best Original Song Score for the film Let It Be. The Minor Planet 4150 Star, discovered on August 31, 1984 by Brian A. Skiff at the Anderson Mesa Station of the Lowell Observatory, was named in Star's honor. Star was nominated for a 1989 Daytime Emmy Award for Outstanding Performer in a Children's Series for his role as Mr. Conductor in the television series Shining Time Station. In 2015, 27 years after he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as one of the Beatles, Star became the last Beatle to be inducted for a solo career. Unlike the other three Beatles who were inducted within the performers category, Starr was inducted within the musical excellence category. During the 50th Grammy Awards, Starr, George Martin, and his son Giles accepted the Best Compilation Soundtrack Award for Love. On November 9, 2008, Starr accepted a Diamond Award on behalf of the Beatles during the 2008 World Music Awards ceremony in Monaco. On February 8, 2010, he was honored with the 2,401st star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame by the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce. It is located at 1750 North Vine Street in front of the Capitol Records building, as are the stars for Lennon, McCartney, and Harrison. Star was appointed a Knight Bachelor in the 2018 New Year Honors for Services to Music. He was knighted in an investiture ceremony at Buckingham Palace by Prince William, Duke of Cambridge on March 20, 2018. In 2022, Starr received an honorary Doctor of Music degree from the Berklee College of Music for his immeasurable impact on music, film, and television, and popular culture. Film Career Starr has received praise from critics and movie industry professionals regarding his acting. Director and producer Walter Shenson called him a superb actor, an absolute natural. By the mid-1960s, Starr had become a connoisseur of film. In addition to his roles in A Hard Day's Night, Help, Magical Mystery Tour and Let It Be, Starr also acted in Candy, The Magic Christian, Blind Man, Son of Dracula and Caveman. In 1971, he starred as Larry the Dwarf in Frank Zappa's 200 Motels and was featured in Harry Nilsson's animated film The Point. He co starred in That'll Be the Day as a Teddy Boy and appeared in The Last Waltz, the Martin Scorsese documentary film about the 1976 farewell concert of the band. Star played the Pope in Ken Russell's Listomania, and a fictionalized version of himself in McCartney's Give My Regards to Broad Street in 1984. Starr appeared as himself in a downtrodden alter ego O'Neill Rats and Ringo, an American-made television comedy film based loosely on The Prince and the Pauper. For the 1979 documentary film on The Who, The Kids Are All Right, Starr appeared in interview segments with fellow drummer Keith Moon. Discography Since the breakup of The Beatles, Starr has released 20 solo studio albums. Books Postcards from the Boys Octopus's Garden Photograph Notes